strong, strong and a geek, strong and a geek. Strong and a geek, strong and a geek, strong and a geek, baby, strong yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting edition of the Strong and the Geek Podcast. Yeah! I am your host, Josh Ramirez, and with me is my special guest co-host, not Doctor Who. Oh! I, I guess that just makes me a regular dude. You got nothing, huh? I, I, I'm not an A-Tardis. Um, how do you feel, not Doctor Who, about that epic sax we're listening to? Oh, it was so good it left my pants with a shardis. Oh, gross! I see what you did there, and I can smell it too. I thought you were gonna make me not epic sax man. Nah, man. Why would I do that? We're listening to epic sax man. Well, yeah, but clearly I can't level up to the the place of epic sax guy. That is true. We have a very exciting show for you this afternoon. We are going to be discussing some very exciting things in a galaxy far away. But first, what'd you get into this week? Well, as you know, last week was Easter. Uh, so, uh, the he- eggs were hidden and the Lord was risen. Yeah, we did not have an Easter special, so... Yeah, we, t- we the, took a week off. For any of the fans who were like, wait, don't you guys always play games on holidays? We we did not have an Easter yeah. week, so... Yeah, well, today is, I guess, uh, today's not a holiday. Yesterday was, though. Right. Because this is our 420 special. Oh. <laughs> Chen bong. That's the, that's the sound of a, a water bong. It sounded like Donald Duck sucking a dick. Oh, yeah, it kind of does. Do it again. Make the sound again. <laughs> that is totally tall duck. With or like, a, or with giving a, a rim job? Yeah, or the pair of nuts in his mouth. Daisy! <laughs> I, can't do, I can't do a Donald voice. That's not bad. <laughs> All right. So, so, that was a waste of 30 you seconds. You know what? I'm going to do that character the whole show. <laughs> okay, Donald Duck with balls in his mouth. Yeah, just like, let me tell you about the last Jedi. Okay. Oh, no. Um, no it's starting to sound like a little demon. It's getting a little weird. Yeah, all right. Back to what you were saying. What did you do? Um... Oh, I mean, nothing for 420, because uh, I don't smoke. Uh, but I, uh, this week, I did get into some interesting hijinks uh, with a new uh, Vigi game, uh, keeping up with my... Uh, did you just have an aneurysm? No. A new what? A Vigi game. I beg your pardon? A video game. A, a what? A video, a video game. Are you Italian? It's or? a me, a video game. Yeah, it's like a pop, a video game. Bibbidi oh. bobbidi video game. Right, let's go to the store and get some videos. It's a video. Okay, now with the videos. Yes, I used to watch movies on VHS. No, video. Video tape. Video tape. <laughs> okay, so what video game? <laughs> uh, I Keeping up with my New Year's resolution to play more games, I picked up Titanfall 2. Uh, which I had not, I never played the first one. I'm not big into multiplayer uh, FPS, like, which is unusual. Yeah, well, yeah, I know most people, it's just like that's all they play. But I prefer single player, like, campaigns. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm super excited for uh, Battlefront 2, which we will talk about more in our Star Wars Late. end of things. Later. Uh, but Titanfall 2, you know, Titanfall 1, it was just the multiplayer. Right. So Titanfall 2, they listened to the fans, they gave them a campaign. It's short. Uh, you could probably beat it in three hours if you were good enough and you were playing like on easy. So what you're saying is you didn't? Uh, me, I mean, I played on a harder difficulty setting. It took me probably about five or six hours. Okay. Uh, so I died a lot. I'll admit to that. But the game's a lot of fun. The interpersonal, like the just the dialogue between the pilot uh, Cooper, the guy you're actually playing. Oh God, his name's Cooper. Yeah. I was just talking to someone at work today. Oh, his name's Jack Cooper. Okay. Cooper's a first name. It's a douche. Oh, yeah, Last no, no, name, no. it's okay. Jack Cooper. And if your first name's Jack, you clearly are a, a hero. Jack Reacher. Uh, Jack and Ryan. Be- Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack Cooper. Jack and the Giant Peach. Jack and Jill. That's James, actually. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, Jack J- Rabbit. Jack Moses. Most people don't know that that was Moses' first name. Jack. And he, parted the, he freed the Jews. Jack O' Lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack who? Jack of all trades. Jack in the Beanstalk. Again. <laughs> that Jack in the Box guy. Oh, yeah. Who puts his head on people's, uh, what are those things called? Antennas? Jack Jack? I was going to call it a Deedle Bopper, but Jacks. I don't know. Jack. 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 You know what? We've probably lost a good bit of the crowd already. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell we, uh, we haven't Jack's done Jack's so- jacking off. <laughs> yeah. We- <laughs> We have done this in like a week or so. All right. What were we saying? Um, Jack Reed so Cooper. Jack, Jack Cooper. Titan Jack Falter. Cooper okay. and, and his Titan, uh, which is BT7274, I believe, BT. Okay. Uh, 
their dialogue is awesome because you get to pick one of two options every time someone talks to you as to how you respond. It doesn't really affect... You either respond or say fuck off. No, no. You either have, like, uh, it's basically more like an honest uh, response or one that's kind of more like... You, you can play whether or not you're, like, the snarky guy or you're, like, the good soldier. You know what I mean? Depending on your, your choices. But it makes for some interesting moments. So at one point... Uh, BT's like, uh, what we need to do is I'm going to have to throw you. And you're like, no, don't do not do that. He goes, just trust me. I'll throw you, and you'll get up to that ledge, and then you can open this door. Whatever. Yeah, that's some uh, puzzle. The game has a lot of platforming elements, which is something that I think is sorely missed in most first-person shooters. So, uh, BT throws you, and when you land, uh, he like calls over to you, and he's like, uh, pilot, how is your status? And one of the options is, I think I need a new pair of underpants. So I picked that one, and uh, you know, he's like, oh, I think I need a new pair of underpants after that throw. And BG's like, noted, it'll be in the next supply drop. <laughs> like, because he's the, he's the Thor, he's the Drax, you know, he doesn't, like, he's a robot. He doesn't catch uh, human joking, right. I guess. And that makes for a lot of funny moments in the dialogue in the game. It's very compelling. Hmm. Uh, the gameplay itself is also awesome. There's a lot of weird mechanics to it that you don't expect in a first-person shooter. So, like, running along walls, climbing up on things, um, super fast-paced, uh, as opposed to, like, uh, you know, sitting down and sniping or whatever. It's, it's much more about being quick. Um, and, like I said before, a lot of platforming elements. So most of my deaths were just from, like, falling off the side of a building or not making a jump far enough, as opposed to most first-person shooters, where the, almost all of your dying is, well, somebody else shot you. So, it's a fun game, and the ending uh, kind of got me a little bit. A little, a little touch in the heart. The robot dies. Of course he dies. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I saw that one coming. Um, I just want to put it aside. I know, well, I'll quit doing this on the air, but um, I just realized that it's been seven minutes, and other than you talking about that, this has been nonsense. <laughs> oh, yeah. We spent a solid minute and a half just saying Jack. Jack. All right, Stri- Jack, Jack. <laughs> Strong and the Geek at its finest. Um, Strong and the Jack. Yeah. I, uh, I So I actually, unfortunately, did not make good on my New Year's resolution. This was the first episode s- since we the New Year. I did not read any of the rebirths this Oh, this man. Week. I know. And the Volume 2, Superman Volume 2, Arrow Volume 2, and Batman Volume 2 all came out, and I didn't pick up any of them. Um so, yeah, I guess I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, well... And I honestly don't have anything else to add to that. Fair enough. <laughs> like, that's pretty much it. That was my week, was just being a total piece of shit. All right. Well, actually... Go, go on, piece of shit. I recant. There is one thing that I will say. I got to re-watch um, Star Wars 4, 5, 6, 7, and Rogue One. That's it. Wow, you had a little Star Wars bender? No, no, it was on different days. Yeah, but still, all in one week, that's that's more or less a Star Wars-a-thon. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I love those films. Well, as do I. Yeah. Ev- everyone loves Star Wars. Yeah, I met I met a couple of people who have never seen Star Wars before. Yeah, I don't understand that. That's like never breathing oxygen? Well, no, that's a bit extreme. It's like if you had said, I've never eaten pizza. Yeah, or I've never breathed oxygen. Yeah, or like, what is this sex you speak of? No, well, there are a lot of virgins out there, like kids. They still see Star Wars. Yeah, but... Like, no, let, let's be clear. Not every kid is a virgin, but... And not every kid has seen Star Wars. Right, was that a pedophile joke I was trying to make? <sighs> yeah. I was thinking it was a high school love romance joke. Well, I guess we have to define where child and adolescence kind of diverge. I feel like if you start trying to gray the line, you're already probably in murky waters. So what your campaign promises is that we'll have less child virgins. No, more. More. I'm, I'm, I'm advocating Josh for... Josh Ramirez, for child virginity, no, 2020. Yeah, yes, and but but losing Star Wars virginity. <laughs> Lose and, your virginity with Josh Ramirez, 2020. No, that's a bad way to put it. That's a bad campaign <laughs> promise. Like, by 2020, there will be a 25% reduction in child virgins. Oh, wow. I wonder how that would like, like how that would go come across. Oh man, I hope that this is someone's first episode. Well, you know what the funny thing is is that with jokes aside, this actually is a good segue into something I did want to mention that I was excited about. Um, someone who who knows maybe one day would have a campaign a political bid who got fired for being a sexual piece of shit, 
Mr. O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. You know what? We normally don't get delve into politics or anything. Too this isn't much. political. This is just news. He's, an, he's a pundit. He's a piece of shit. He's a pundit of shit. Yeah. He's a, he's a jack of shit. So for any of you, for some reason, don't know, Bill O'Reilly um, was a big... Had the O'Reilly factor, the no-spin zone. He was basically... He is the highest rated like newsman of all time right and he was on fox for you know 20 20, years 21 years um well he got fired this week after all this time because of lots and lots of reports of him sexually harassing and making unwanted advances and that kind of stuff um to lots of different people including calling one um one black worker hot chocolate Um, Uh, yeah the network had to pay out 13 million dollars and that's just in the ones they settled he there's uh, others that they did not apparently a couple different people reported that he would call them and then it would just be the sound of him masturbating well it's not just that there's a recording of him telling her what he wants to do to her oh okay and she's not replicating and the funniest thing about it can we play this on the air can we look it up and play it uh i don't i don't know if it's like released i think they just have the transcript oh damn it uh, yeah, I don't think you can actually listen to the audio. Well, but you know, the... I have a weird feeling that if, um, if you know, if for some reason, if this show ever had, like, you know, like, sometimes the Marvel movies have post credit scenes, yeah. I feel like if, I have a weird tingling in my sensation that if this show had one of those, we might hear a rendition of that. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. Well, evidently, in the tape, he tells her that he wants... Uh, her to be in the shower, and he wants to, like, soap up her boobs. <laughs> it's, like, such a weird thing for, like, a middle-aged man to be, like, soapy boobs or whatever. Yeah. And then he uh, tries to tell her that he's, like, gonna use the loofah on her, but he mixes it up and he calls it a falafel. I'm not making that up. No, he says he's gonna rub her with a falafel in the shower. Maybe he meant falafel. Maybe he wanted to use a falafel. Well, he had already said loofah once earlier. <laughs> but maybe, you might be right, maybe he has a very specific fetish maybe. and he just wants to rub women with Indian uh, is falafel is that Indian or Arabic? I, I think it's like Palestinian. No, oh, okay. So he wants to rub a woman down with Palestinian food in All a shower. All I'm saying is, is that 21 years and drink hot chocolate. 21 years being, you know, a conservative, basically Piece icon. Of shit. Icon. Um, you know what you want. So if you want a falafel on a girl's butthole, <laughs> I guess that's what that's whatever you're into. Yeah. But anyway, the reason why he got fired really wasn't because of the sexual allegations at all. They don't really care about that. What they really cared about was the fact that. 50 or 60 advertisers pulled from his show, so he stopped being marketable. And uh, they were actually, apparently there's a uh, a merger going on with Fox, uh, well, News Corp, the parent company, and, a comp- and another uh, TV station in Britain. And Britain, uh, it's like a $14 billion deal. And they, they were like, ooh, well, we don't know if you guys are up to our morality standards. You know, they were being all British about it. And this whole thing, they were like, ooh, you guys have a sexual harasser as your number one show? And they're like, ooh, no, this is too big a deal to let slip through for O'Reilly. So when it comes right down to it, it's about the money, Lebowski. But we support the women. Oh, of course, yeah. No, because we're not monsters. No, we're not. We make jokes like monsters, but we're not monsters. No. So We drink monsters. So we watch Monsters, Inc. Uh, Fox News, thank you for... Doing the right thing, even whoa, though whoa, it whoa. was whoa, wait a minute for your wait, own no, needs. Pa- pause the show. What did you just say? The, I mean, firing him was the right thing to do. I know, but I just never thought I'd hear the words in the same in sequence in a sentence. Thank you, Fox News, for doing the right thing. Yeah, I know. It's uh, they did the right unless, thing. Unless the the next word, the subsequent word in that sentence is just kidding. Psych. Yeah, they did the right thing by ousting Roger Ailes last year, and now they've ousted. Bill O'Reilly. Next, uh, I, I mean, all they have to do is go after Sean Hannity, or I just, guess, is the next one. Or just cancel Fox and Friends. Just get that off the air. <laughs> um, Steve Ducey. Yeah, so um, I never thought I would say this, but Fox News, um, you might be, continue your shit like this, and one day you might be a geek of the week. Oof. No, not this week. Not, not this, this week. No, you, no right now you're, you're not even a geek. You're just a week. Yeah. You're something that happened during the week. But in any case, down goes Frazier. Bill yeah. O'Reilly's fuck out of there so he's so fuck it he's doing it live not anymore not anymore all right so moving on speaking of geeks of the week let me tell you a little story that might happen to be the geek of this week yeah all right so this week um a very famous um fast food chain announced that they are going to start dabbling in the business of matrimony Oh, yeah, I heard about this. So, if you've ever had... I the, guess the bells are tolling. Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> if you've ever had the craving to eat a taco while preparing to wed your sweetie, you're in luck. 
because Taco Bell just announced this week that starting at their Las Vegas location, they will now be serving on the menu, literally on the menu, for six hundred United States dollars a wedding package, which includes a service, a reception, um, matching outfits, two champagne glasses of Baja Blast, a twelve pack of tacos to eat, um, a Cinnabon cake, and a bouquet made from sauce packets. Yeah. Do you think they needed to train those employees specifically, or do they have a wedding guy? They have a ordained minister. Well, but what I'm saying is, Let's the, be on retainer. is the ordained minister also the guy that makes the wedding bouquet and pours the Baja Blast champagne, or do they have, like, they have to specifically train their staff to do weddings? Wasn't there a wedding planner movie with Jennifer Lopez or something? Uh, Probably. I'm I'm assuming it's someone the like, wedding planner. Yeah, I'm assuming it's someone like that, like a shit, like a like a shitty actor who does shouldn't have that job. It's Taco Bell can afford to like you know give some spokesperson the money just to be there and flashy faces and. Oh, uh, it'd be great if it was like Gary Busey. Yes, just come up and be like Taco Bell wedding day. He would do it for free though. He'd do it pro bono. He'd be like, <laughs> no, he'd just be like, give me the tacos. Just, no, just imagine if just all tea. Just imagine if you're there, you're in Vegas, you're like, let's do it, Taco Bell wedding. I'm already like drunk as shit anyway. Then you're like, oh, well, Gary Busey's included in the package, and the Taco Bell manager's like, no, <laughs> looks over there, and he's just, I just love weddings. <laughs> It's like, I'll, I'll marry you for a chalupa. <laughs> Amazon just... Fire TV stick. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> so, that's, it, ah, fire salsa on my taco. Um, he's just horse teeth and crazy faced. Well, anyway, Taco Bell, so you're, <coughs> you are a geek of the week because way to be an innovator. Way to give us the option to be wed for $600. Am I going to spend thirty grand on a wedding? No. I'm going to spend 600 bucks and scarf down 12 tacos with my sweetheart. Well, you do got a destination wedding to Las Vegas. So, I mean, that does add on some of the cost. Nah, but see, not $35,000. Actually, that sounds like you're anti-love. Love will find a way. No, man, I'm just so pro-diarrhea, man. Rhonda, <laughs> we'll always love you. Gary Pusey love taco. Dude, we're going to lose all of our followers after this one. All right, Jack and Jill. Anyway, <laughs> anyway um, so yeah, Taco Bell, uh, well done. You will be not receiving your check in the mail. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Honestly, it was a really shitty week for geeks out there, um, so we really had no other choice. So, uh, sorry. Thanks for being our runner-up, Taco Bell. Yeah. To nothing. But in any case, we, uh, we're we keeping it shorter tonight because we need to discuss Star Wars. Yes, we do. We need to discuss Star Wars. So, for any of you who don't know, this past weekend was Star Wars Celebration, and I am not going to use the words that I used during Star Wars Celebration to, ex to you know, demonstrate my excitement for some of the things that were announced, so I'll be polite. Holy shit, we got the trailer for Star Wars number eight. Yeah, The Last Jedi. Oh, we for Yeah, it's awesome, man. Uh, as a trailer, I wouldn't say it's, like, it wasn't as good as The Force Awakens trailer It was a teaser. Was. It was a teaser. It's not a trailer. Uh, but, and it gave us a little tease. And we got the poster. And the poster, in my opinion, is a bigger deal than the trailer. Okay, well, let's start from the get-go here. You know, I know a lot of things were announced at Celebration, and we'll mention a little bit later um, when we talk about them. And then we're also going to talk about um, some theories that we have and we've heard about Last Jedi. But let's just dissect that trailer first things first um, and the poster and everything. First thing I notice off the bat, um, the Star Wars logo is red, not yellow. What's up with that? Yeah. What, who are they trying to convince? Well, they, What are they trying to hide? They do different colors depending on the movie. Really? They've all been yellow? No, they haven't. I have never seen one that isn't yellow. Oof, dude, that, you're straight up wrong on this I'm one. not talking about the poster. I'm talking about like in the commercials and stuff. Yeah, no. Um, all of them are different colors depending on the one. Um, I'm saying but in, in, in the movie, it always comes up yellow. Like, in the movie, it always is yellow. Oh, you mean when it first pops up on the screen? Yeah. Yeah, it, it presumably still will But be. in this trailer, it's red. Why is that? Uh, the Force Awakens trailer was yellow. Right. Uh, so, when the, the movie actually one, starts no, for the opening one, two, crawl, you One, mean. two, and three, the, the trailers, but I'm saying yeah. in the posters, they changed the font, sure. But in the trailer, it was red, too. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And that I don't understand. Uh, I mean, I think there's definitely a tonal shift in this film. 
Uh, this which, is which their is, empire. Yeah, well, every second sequel of every trilogy is... And, and I think it's going to follow Empire, at, not as closely as uh, Force Awakens followed A New Hope, but I think pretty closely. Right. Someone's going to lose a hand. Someone's going to get betrayed. And you know how I know someone's going to lose a hand? Because they telegraphed hands so much in this trailer. Yep. The first shot is Ray's hand splayed out on this rock. Right. Uh, which, at first, when you look at the rock, it looks like the night sky. Mm-hmm. And then it's, oh, it turns out there's Ray's hand. Um, now which that... mirrors what they did with the Force Awakens trailer when the hand comes out to grab right. Uh, uh, Finn. Right. Right off the bat... Um, we see that this is going to be taking place immediately after Force Awakens because Rey's dressed the same. She's yeah. The same clothes. Or at least and th- maybe that's a, a flashback to when he fir- they first saw each other. Well, and what we did... O- so we know the planet now is called Octo, and it's a, presumably where there was an old Jedi temple or somewhere in proximity to that. Yeah, they say that it's presumably where the first Jedi temple was. Right. So we know Rey will be there training with Luke for at least some portion of this film. Yeah. Um, and we get a little bit of Luke telling her, we get the first dialogue in the trailer being Luke telling her to breathe, just breathe, and then he says, tell me what you see, and she says she sees the light and the darkness and balance. Mm-hmm. So let's dissect that. Okay. Well, uh, first things first, we also have to look at what, what the camera looks at when she's saying these things. Right. When she says... Uh, we, we hear Luke's voice telling her, just breathe, whatever. If you listen closely, there's a bunch of other things going on in the background. There's, uh, you hear Obi-Wan uh, giving the, um, you uh, tr- feel, don't think, or whatever. You right. uh, When it shows Leia, you start to hear the, help me, Obi-Wan. You're, you're my and when hope. she says, she sees the light, it shows Leia looking yes. at some kind of star map or something. And I think that that's very important. I think that Leia is going to be the anchoring in she is good I think, no matter what. I think we're going to get a lot more Leia in this one. Yeah. Well, she does play a, a, a rather large role and she was supposed to play a, a large role in the next movie as well, but obviously that's going to have to change, unfortunately. Right. Uh, then she says the darkness and we see a smashed still smoldering uh, Kylo Ren mask. Which I had difficulty recognizing the first time I watched the trailer. Oh, yeah, no, um, I've watched this trailer like eight times. Me too. Now. And I'm interested as to what's going on there. Yeah, I don't know if, is that, uh, like, right after what happened on the Starkiller base? Right. Because um, we see Kylo Ren in this trailer, and his scar is healed. Actually, and, and um, it's moved position, and that was also announced this week that literally was just um, a director's choice, that wanting to move the scar so that it doesn't look goofy. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Um, so so there's definitely uh, uh, an issue of this idea of balance, and um, whereas the Jedi are always for the light and the Sith are always for the dark, I think this is going to delve into the concept of gray Jedi a lot. I also agree, and especially because Star Wars Rebels has been talking about that yeah. a lot, too. And Luke, I mean, again, we're going through the whole trailer, but we do have to talk about the fact that at the end, he says, it's time for the Jedi to end. And people are like, what does that mean? Well, and we're going to... And I think... Before I, we even... I say pump the brakes, but before we even get there, um, do we just want to highlight the a couple of things we saw in the trailer first? Well, I thought we would talk about that when we were talking about predictions for, like events of the movie instead well, just of, like, some, just some main themes. I was just saying, some other things we see in the trailer really quickly, we see um, Poe and BB-8 running, and then their X-Wing get destroyed. Yeah, and the, Faz- the and black X-Wing. And Phasma show up with yeah. some guards. We see... Which is very reminiscent of the opening from Force Awakens. Right. We see um, the shot of Luke putting his robot hand... Well, presumably Luke putting his robot hand R2-D2 while the some, his training camp or whatever is burning, but from another angle, mm-hmm. which means we'll probably get a flashback of that or something. And we see um, John Boyega... <laughs> can still laugh every time we talk about John Boyega. Shout Jack back, Boyega. Back, back to episode one of Strong and the Geek. Um, John Boyega being taken... Whatever. John Boyega being taken in a, a device that presumably is like a back-to-tank or something. Yeah, I've heard that uh, Rumor Mill says that he's actually going to have some kind of a back-to-suit in this. So, like, maybe uh, technology is advanced to the fact that he's going to be in some kind of suit I mean, he did get slashed body. straight on the spine, so... Yeah. I wonder if uh, that's going to play into the whole, like more machine than man thing maybe like is 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 he gonna become cyborg one of the few black people in the galaxy is gonna become cyborg i mean it was it was destined to happen i guess yeah. according to the, their the lore. will of the force um 
So anyway, now back to what you were saying. So yeah, Luke says, time for the Jedi to end, and everybody lost their shit. Yeah, so the thing about that is, uh, Luke, I d- uh, some people have been like, well, this might be taken out of context. He might say, like, it's time for the Jedi to end the reign of the First Order. I'm like, no, there's no way that they just cut this scene short to mess with people. That's stupid. Well, there's a couple theories here. One was that it wasn't Luke actually saying it. It was someone else, but they make, edited the trailer, so it looks like it was Luke. But no, that's definitely Mark Hamill's voice. Well, that, and you see the silhouette of Luke Skywalker, and you see the jaw move when he says, to end. But uh, but not necessarily... I mean, the, the trailers can... do They've messed with stuff like that before, but... And, but there's an intent... That would be intentionally messing with the audience. Which has happened. Right, but I, I doubt that... I doubt that's oh, the I, angle I, they're taking. I totally doubt it, too. I'm just I'm just uh, devil's advocate. I, I honestly think what he's saying is, I tried doing it the way that I was taught, and it blew up in my face. My star pupil killed all my other pupils. It's time for the way that the Jedi do things to end. It's time for us to embrace both sides of the spectrum. Well, and I think that Luke, I mean, in Return in Return of the Jedi, you see Luke doing that, Force choking the Gamorreans and stuff. You see him using the dark side yeah. a little bit. And to be fair, and he it was his rage that helped him defeat Vader, ultimately. Yeah. But um, the other thing that I think is noteworthy is that take a look at the Jedi's track record based from the films. They, following their code, led to Anakin becoming Vader in the first place. And that same code led to the Empire and has presumably led to Kylo Ren. Yeah. So he lost his nephew and his dad because of the Jedi Code being in some way bullshit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I agree with you. Maybe he's just saying it's... And since he was the last Jedi Knight, he is the last Jedi. Yeah. So he's saying from now on, we're, we, have to, we have to do something differently. Yeah. I, I think they'll still call him Jedi, but... Uh, I think the other thing about that is his... Uh, I, I think he's in mourning. You know, I think oh, that yeah. the Luke we're going to see in this... Because the rumor is that when it starts out, uh, he's going to pretend like he doesn't know Ray. Right. Uh, and, and that's going to be like a, a thing for the audience, like that they're, they're not connected in some deeper way. And then in the same way that Yoda pretended that he... Now, it's not the same kind of reveal because Yoda, the audience didn't know, right. was a weird green puppet. Uh, but it'll be a reveal to the audience regardless because it'll turn out that... He does know her because whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, well, which we we'll get too deeper in we theories. We, yeah, we don't know that. We don't know if they know each but other. But the rumor is that he's going to pretend the way that Yoda pretended not to know, which would be which would mirror Empire. But and again, uh, I think that there are going to be a lot of things in this that mirror Empire. Like someone is going to lose a hand. Yeah, <laughs> we see we see Ray's hand go splayed at the beginning, and then we also see the Man of Steel moment where all the little pebbles start coming up and her fist is down. Uh, they focus on hands so much. I'm telling you, Ray's gonna lose a hand. See, I think that we're gonna have a betrayal. I think someone's just like Lando betrayed them. I think one of the characters is gonna betray the other ones. There's definitely gonna be a straight up Hoth looking scene when we see those uh, junk speeders that are kicking up the red dust. Yeah, I mean, if that... you look in the background, there's a line of dog walkers that they're going towards. Yeah, AT-ATs. it's a desert planet, but yeah, it's yeah, but that's like a straight up recreation right. of Hoth. We have weird speeders gonna go fight walkers. Presumably, they're gonna have some kind of anti wire system they've invented. Maybe like a little kickstand in case they get tipped over. Yeah, yeah. Just like whoop, you can pick some back up. Well and actually wouldn't that be a great shot if they do the trick and it like falls down and then it just stands back up. Or like and it they're snaps like, them. They're like, uh oh, what do we do now? Yeah. We don't know what to do. Yeah, I and like or have like Leia or three PR or one of them be like, I thought that would work. Like, yeah. Like or because then it would mirror the idea that like, wow, they, they really decided to do everything the Empire did. They built a bigger Death Star, they built bigger do- but it's like, oh, they learned from their mistakes this time right. and they're doing something different. I think that would actually make for a pretty cool shot. I would think it would be kinda good. And a little ha ha moment too. Yeah. Um now a lot of people were losing their shit about who is the last Jedi, is it plural, is it singular? And then I saw that some of in the some of the Spanish language versions of the trailer it said like the last Jedi, but in Spanish using the plural the so los versus yeah. singular. So some people are like, oh, it must be plural or whatever. But I'm pretty positive that Luke is the last Jedi. And my evidence is from rewatching Force Awakens. In Force Awakens, in the opening crawl, they say Luke Skywalker, comma, the last Jedi. They call him that in the opening yeah. crawl. And then Snoke tells him, we need to find Skywalker, the last Jedi. He's referred to twice by that title, so I think it's Luke that they're referring yeah. to. Yeah. 
I think this movie is going to be heavily focused on Luke. And we see that not just in this trailer, but again, the poster. Right. The poster is super interesting. Right. So the posters, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, if you know Star Wars posters, they always go very artistic. And they usually, they, they've packed more and more characters into this thing. Usually the biggest face that you see is the villain. Almost, Darth Vader's in almost all of them as this big looming face in the background. Or Phantom Menace, it was Darth Maul was the whole background of it. Uh, in Attack of the Clones, I think you see the Emperor, if I remember correctly. I don't remember all but those But then from, uh, from Revenge of the Sith through even Rogue One, there's a big Darth Vader head in the background, right? So in the poster for The Last Jedi, it's very simple. There's only three people on it. The middle is Rey mirroring Luke Skywalker from the original Star Wars poster, uh, back, back before it was even A New Hope, just the original Star Wars poster where it's just uh, him in the middle holding up the blue lightsaber. So she's in the middle holding up a blue lightsaber. The background is straight up blood red. There's so much red on this poster. And one side is Kylo Ren, and the other side is Luke. Luke's face is bigger. I know that that's a small thing, and it might mean nothing, but it might mean something... It might... Uh, means something important to the plot of this story. Also, Luke's side isn't blue. Luke's side isn't gray. Luke's side isn't green. It's red. It is. And Star Wars, like, George Lucas made this franchise red equals bad, blue, or red is bad, blue is good. And green is... And green is also, also good. good. Also good. Anything but red is good. Right. Uh, unless it comes to the spaceships, because TIE Fighters shoot green and right. X-Wings shoot red. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, when you when we see this image, a lot of people are like, does it mean The Last Jedi because Luke has turned? Or Luke is going to turn in this movie? Like, he's... The, the dark Luke storyline is finally going to come to, to, to a head? Because that was one thing Mark Hamill pushed Lucas for when they were making the Ridge Tridge. They were saying, Luke needs to turn. Like, Luke needs to, to turn, and then Leia needs to convince Luke about the, the light side again. Uh, and George Lucas didn't want to go with that. But that was one thing that... Ha uh, Harrison Ford was pushing for Han to die in Jedi, and Luke was pushing for Luke to turn in Jedi. And what we got was something very different. Uh, but... Maybe, I mean, we saw Han die in Force Awakens, so maybe we'll see Luke turn in The Last Jedi. And literally, The Last Jedi means he was the last one. Perhaps. And, and he turns, which would be very interesting. Uh, I don't know if I'd like that. <laughs> um, I think it would upset me. But I am cu very curious to see how this one pans out. Yeah, I'm excited also. And truthfully, I am gonna be totally fine if Ray is is a you know person who can use both sides and can kind of balance the force. The only thing I really hope that they don't come up with a new thing like there were Jedi and there were Sith and now they're oh they come up with just a, a new or word. Something. I, that I would not like. Well, because they never said the word Sith in the original trench. That was introduced in Phantom Menace. But that was that, that's lore though. That was lore, but. It wasn't lore initially when they made the movies. Well, so they well, no, no, came it, up with a unless, word. No, no, unless Lucas had that in mind before, we don't know. But I, I don't want it to be a new thing. I don't want to see a title that's like, like Episode Nine, Birth of the Nodge Podge, or something. Like, I don't want that. I want, I want it to still be like, like she's not a Jedi, but maybe she calls herself a Jedi, but the code has changed or something. I don't know. I just, I, I want it to have some. Stop because the Jedi. You know, we've all wanted to be Jedi. We've well, all idolized I mean, they might the Jedi. Just for call years. themselves Gray Jedi or something like that. Or yeah. just be like, she. They might be like, so what are you a Sith? You a Jedi? And they might say, I'm neither. Oh, uh, like, <coughs> like a, um, you know, gender ambiguous. Yeah, like, I, it, it doesn't matter yeah. what you call it. I am what I am. Right. That type of thing. Uh, so. There are a lot of things swirling around, again, the trailer and the poster that give us hints as to what this movie's going to be. I, I've, I've said it already twice now, but I think it's going to heavily mirror uh, Empire. And I think that's to its benefit. Uh, you know, uh, 
A New Hope was mirrored by Force Awakens, and both of those are amazing movies. People argue, oh, it's too much like it, but if it's too much like a great thing, then it's also a great thing. Empire, same with The Last Jedi, presumably. And then the next one you would think would mirror Return of the Jedi, but hopefully they stay, uh, they keep from the kiddie stuff. You know, and they keep it more serious because the, the, there is a very serious tone in this. Yeah, and I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be a couple laughs here and there because it's Star Wars. Oh yeah, comedy's mm-hmm. fine, but but the tone is definitely going to be lo- hope is being lost. Yeah, and it will end with hope being it, presumably gone. This from the trailer and the poster, it looks super dark. Uh, now, do we want to briefly touch on Star Wars Celebration before we talk about theories? No. Theories first. Okay, fair enough. All right, so let's dig into um, we. So we, I in particular this week, I did go through and I saw lots and lots of theories about last um, the last Jedi, and so I wanted to just bring up a few of them and we can you know bounce them back and forth so the listeners can hear them if they're not familiar with the theory, but they can also get our take. So theory one and probably the biggest area of discussion is race parentage. Yeah, who are race parents? Everybody's the, the predominant theories are it's either Luke or Obi Wan Kenobi's grand, grandchild. There are a couple other ones that no, are no no those the predominant ones are those that yeah. that Obi Wan's granddaughter is Rey or Luke's daughter is Rey or both or a, she's a Skywalker and a Kenobi making her the ultimate of the Jedi. So I'm gonna shoot down a Kenobi. I'm gonna shoot down two of those three. A Kenobi. Okay. I definitely do not think that she is a Kenobi Skywalker hybrid. That I I just I can't buy into it. I you think, think it's too much. Destiny? I think it's overkill. And truthfully, I just couldn't see how that would be too many hoops and too much exposition to explain how that happened. I don't know about that. I yeah. feel like you, they, be... would, they would have to explain the where the Kenobis came from, and then they'd have to explain oh, and also like where Luke's side came from. So. No, simply enough just saying Obi-Wan that... Obi-Wan had a daughter and Luke fucked her and... Obi-Wan had a daughter on Tatooine, and after the events of the Return of the Jedi, Luke met her. Like, that's simple enough to explain. I feel like that's... But I feel like... But then we need to get... Who is she? We want to know more about her. That's but, fine. Uh, the thing about it, though, that I would say might be interesting is, again, we're talking about balance and the light and the dark. And it all goes back to that first scene when we see lightsabers burn... It's a Kenobi and a Skywalker. You know what I mean? It's literally light and dark right there. Uh, how much more interesting would it be if she's literally the granddaughter of both Anakin and Obi-Wan? I mean... That makes a lot of sense, though. Right. I just don't... I honestly don't see her being related to Kylo Ren. I know everybody wants that to happen. I don't see them being related. So I personally give that theory one Josh thumb down. Okay. Which well, means I don't believe it. I like that theory. I don't know if that's where the direction they're going to go, but I think thematically, because they talk about you know Anakin, you were the we thought the pro- prophecy said you were the chosen one. You're supposed to bring balance to the force. Right. How much more would there be actual balance? Because balance isn't get rid of all the bad guys. Balance is light and darkness, yin yang. Right. You know what I mean? How much more balance would it be if space Hitler? Uh, or I guess not Space Hitler, but Space Goebbels, who's, who's Vader, uh, and Obi-Wan, who was, like, Space Jesus, uh, their granddaughter is the person who brings balance to everything. Yeah, I don't know. I just, in my opinion, that's, uh, I just don't see, um, I just don't see that happening. I don't know. I can't. And also, I guess from my from my stating that I don't think Kylo Ren and Rey are going to be related, that also gives a Josh thumb down to I don't think it's Luke's daughter. Okay. I think that would be shitty. So what do you think of the Kenobi line? I, two things. I can buy into it, and I hope this is, and I hope she's Kenobi's granddaughter. Yeah? I do hope that we but, get. But not a Skywalker. I don't want the connection to the Skywalker. But this is my Kenobi granddaughter part that I am okay with, Okay. I don't want a whole lot of exposition explaining, you know, that Obi-Wan had this big whole family and we get into all that. I don't want all that. I want maybe a little bit to figure it out. However, a couple things that I would like, and the reasons why I see um, kind of the connection between Rey and, Ken- and Obi-Wan, um, both Obi-Wan and Rey pull out a lightsaber, the Luke's lightsaber, out of a chest, 
in Force Awakens, and Force Awakens, and in A New Hope. So that's kind of mirroring that imagery. Um, also, for me, how powerful would it be that Obi Wan and Anakin battled and had that final battle, and now it'll be Rey, their grandchildren have a final battle, but it's not the same grandchild. It's two different grandchildren having a final battle okay. when Rey and and Kylo Ren battle. Also, um, I think it's important to note that Obi-Wan was Anakin's master. Anakin turned to the dark side, and then because Anakin kind of destroyed everything Obi-Wan wanted, Obi-Wan went into hiding and ended up coming back to train Luke. This is flipping that. Luke trains his apprentice. His apprentice turns, destroys everything he wants. He goes into hiding. He's going to turn around and train his apprentice. His apprentice is Rey, who Rey's going to take on the role of Luke, but she's actually a Kenobi. So it's a literally mirror. Complete mirror. That's that's and, a good thought. And Kenobi, so, Ken, so Obi-Wan is on both sides. He was the, in the beginning and the end, and yeah, the Skywalker's still in the it. middle. I think that's, I can see that being a good, and that's a, to me that's a balance. It's balancing the scale. Well, and the interesting thing about that is that Ewan McGregor has said, I would love to do a Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan movie. movie on what happens in between Jedi and, and uh, the, or not Jedi, or uh, between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And supposedly we're going to get, by the end of the year, we're going to have our 2019, 2019, 2020. 2020, because 2000, oh, wait, no, no, 2019. No, 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 t- t- no 19 is episode 9, because yeah. next year Han Solo, t- so 2020, our 2020 Star Wars movie. We're gonna get what it is announced. I'm gonna put my money on it's an Obi Wan movie. If that or is, a Boba Fett. Movie. If that is true, Boba Fett like it could be fun or whatever. But if there's an Obi Wan movie that fills in that gap, ah, oh, dude, it'd be so good. That would be perfect because he. It, everyone agrees. Ewan McGregor was the best part of the prequel trilogy. I mean, I honestly, in hindsight, there's a lot about the prequels I'll talk about, but that that I really actually now like, and I kind of have to change. I kind of view them favorably now, and I could defend why, but not right now. Not in this yeah, episode. No, not, not right now. Right now we're talking about The Last Jedi and what's coming next. Of course. So, I like everything you said, although I feel like everything you said could also apply if it turns out that she was... Uh, granddaughter? Granddaughter of both. I just don't want them. Vader I and don't. Kenobi. I don't want her and Kylo to be related. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, all right, uh, theory, theory two. Uh... Actually, hold up. There's another weird one about her parents. There's a few other weird ones. That's actually, I was, that's why I was going to pop the brakes. So, um, there's another one that, I don't know if you heard this, but that Snoke manipulated the Metachlorians to create Rey in the same way that the Emperor manipulated the Metachlorians to create Because Snoke is secretly Anakin. Darth Plagueis? Or just, well, that's, that's another, that was theory two is who's going to be who Snoke is. Yeah. Um, I don't, this one was just that he just did that. Okay. Um, it doesn't necessarily. I mean, hadn't heard this one yet, but I, I'm I'm already digging it. It doesn't mean necessarily it's Plagueis, but it's just Snoke did it to manipulate them to get her the same way that the Emperor presumably did that to get. So Anakin. she's neither a Kenobi or a Skywalker or anything. She's something new. And that maybe her mom was one of one of Luke's students that could have been or something that like fled when Kylo attacked yeah. or something. Okay. Interesting because I heard, what if she's a Palpatine? Oh. That. That old Grandpa Palpatine had, because I mean he's a Sith; he can do whatever the fuck he wants. There's no Jedi hangups, and that he's not putting his, his lightsaber away. His granddaughter is actually Rey, and that's why uh, Kylo Ren freaks out when he hears that there's a, the, about the girl because that was his grandfather's master. You know what I mean? Like he knows right. who she is, and he's afraid of her because it was because of her grandfather that his grandfather died right i also i know that this with this theory some of the evidence where they showed that how ray fights she does like a stabbing motion and the only other person we ever see in the movies do that is palpatine with his lightsaber doing that stabbing attack um i personally think this theory is bullshit oh no i totally i agree. think it's completely i feel bullshit. like so many people would be so mad but there's uh again with all conspiracy theories there's a compelling argument to be made right uh I would hate if would it hate turned it. out I that she was a Palpatine. Too. The last because Palpatine is the devil. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's Vader. There was a, a sliver of light in him, and his son is Space Jesus. Oh, Emperor, totally. Evil. You know what I mean, but the Emperor is pure evil. Right, there's nothing redeemable in him. So the last Array's parent theory that I heard, and this is probably the most, even more 
far-fetched and annoying than that is that Rey is the, and follow me here, the reincarnation of Anakin Skywalker. Yes. And this one comes from a leaked, uh, in quotation marks, leaked script, which obviously most of those are bullshit. Usually 99% of them are bullshit. We've discussed this, I think, off-air before. Yeah. But um, in this one, and I'm not making this up, um, uh, there the scene uh, allegedly is that Luke says something about his father, and then Ray says, "I'm your father." To no. Luke, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. hang on. No, the way I heard it written was she's angry with him because she believes that he's her father, oh, and and he says, and, and "You she, are my yeah, father." She keeps saying, yeah. like, "Why? Why won't you just admit it? That you're you are my, my father." And he says, "No." And he says, "No, you're my." <laughs> that's how you know you're my father, and that's and what then he, reveals, he, get, he goes he reveals, into an exposition dump about. Yeah, that. he reveals to her like, "No, you're my father. You're actually the reincarnation." And apparently, the theory goes like this: It's not just that, like, it's Anakin reborn. It's that the chosen one, the force manipulates it so that the chosen one kind of like the matrix there's a chosen one that comes out every or if we're going into actual because the whole idea of uh you know the original jedi thing was based on like uh, japanese bushido i mean and then we went into the uh, the prequel trilogy where it was like oh the 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 prodigal son or, or whatever the uh the immaculate conception right so we've already seen two different kind of cultures and like they're like and warrior the, this monks. idea would be uh that in this new trilogy, we're focusing on the idea of Eastern religions and this, you know, reincarnation or whatever, and that she is like uh, an avatar, right. you know, that the Force chooses an avatar, uh, and that unfortunately Anakin squandered that. But apparently, um, apparently, there's some also like familial connection. Yeah. Can I say I hate this one most of all? Yeah. Oh yeah. If if that actually happens and they drop that line. I know that after it's the du- no that is the dumbest thing. I That's know the that dumbest line ever. Rogue written. One and Force no, Awakens you're my and Rebels and a lot of the other stuff. I have legitimately thought, okay, you know, Disney, you've done it. You've made Star Wars great again. Not referring to any other person who uses a phrase like that, but Darth Trump. If Darth Trump, but if that line was uttered, no, you're my father. Would you walk out? I wouldn't walk out. I'd be compelled to see what happens, but holy fuck. I would be mad. I would. I would out loud boo. I would. I, I wouldn't walk out, but I would be like boo. I would yell, "God damn it!" Uh, now, I I do believe uh, a tweak on that theory. Well, I mean, I don't believe that it's true, but my theory, based on that theory, is not a straight up reincarnation, but a clone. That the first order attempted to clone Darth Vader because they were trying to recreate the Empire, and of course they would have. His biological material, he's in a back to tank on Mustafar all the time. And they and, had his helmet. And the clone came out a girl, and they just threw her on Jakku because they thought she wasn't a clone of Anakin. Hmm. And that uh, that's why she doesn't know her family and uh, the people that would have raised her to see if, you know, whatever, that she's like, they're coming back, but they're never coming back because they were agents of the First Order. And that she's actually a clone of Anakin that happened to come out as a girl instead of a boy again dealing with that kind of gender fluidity thing right still dumb uh still a dumb theory better than reincarnation you're my father yeah but still dumb yeah uh but that would also explain why kylo ren freaks out when he's like what girl because he knows what planet they're on and he knows that there's a girl there that's the reincarnation of his grandfather who he has a boner for right um I, i hope not yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I most like the Kenobi or Skywalker Kenobi. Uh, right. Can, can you imagine if they were just like, no, it turns out her parents is just Tom and Jane. I honestly you don't even know that's them. No, that's the other theory is that, that because it was mentioned. Because fans have made such a big deal. Well, and, and JJ straight up said her parents are not in Force Awakens. Yeah. That they were not in the movie. So that leads me to think Luke has nothing to do with her that she's not related to any of them. Part of me thinks maybe it was all a big ruckus, and yeah, they're just some people. Maybe they were students of Luke's, but they're they're just some people. Yeah. But again, it could be, well, Obi-Wan Kenobi wasn't in Force Awakens. And that's my... Darth that's... Vader was not in Force Awakens. We so... saw his mask. So yeah, but... Oh, we heard Kenobi's voice, so... I'm banking on it being Kenobi's granddaughter. Yeah. But, um, all right. So, 
A couple other theories. So who is Snoke? Who is Snoke? Who is Snoke? My, I, I still believe it's going to turn out he's Darth Plagueis. Okay, and that's, uh, and that's probably one of the biggest theories, is yeah. that he's Plagueis. They're, there are some really weird ones. So Plagueis is, for any of you who don't know, Emperor's, the Emperor Palpatine, his master. And he talks about in Revenge of the yeah, Sith. He, how was, he, he was the former Dark Lord of the Sith. How he supposedly murdered him after stealing basically his powers to manipulate life and that kind of but stuff. But Darth Plagueis had mastered life. So presumably, Plagueis could have kept himself alive and became Snoke. Um, I don't buy into it. A couple reasons why. If you see what Plagueis looks like from artwork and everything, Snoke doesn't look anything like him. Yeah, but that shit's all... That's just artist rendering. I Yeah, that's but that for me is one thing. For two, I, I don't see how Plagueis could just go into hiding and then just somehow come back for the First Order. I don't... I think that'd be laziness on their part just kind of like rehashing stuff that already happened I mean I would like it it would be a good connection to the original to the to the prequel trilogy but I wouldn't like it yeah okay so I heard the theory that he's possibly Boba Fett okay this... and the reason he's so mangled is because he got out of the Sarlacc pit I heard this and this is um... and that he doesn't actually like have the force or anything he just knows so much about it that he like trained Kylo Ren. So before we even say, can we just both agree this is that one's bullshit? Uh, it's a dumb theory. That one's bullshit. It's a really dumb. But theory. I will, which would make for an interesting Boba Fett movie, yeah. though. If that's the bridging thing, right. we see him become, rise to so, become the first order, the leader, the first leader. But I mean, look at Snoke's face, and then just remember back to what Boba Fett looks like. Right. I mean, we, Boba Fett's a clone of his father, so he will look exactly. And like I don't him. Know, remember the name of the actor. But that guy doesn't look a damn thing like a Snoke. But you know what? I'm going to up the ante. You, that more even than that actor, the theory I heard that right now is making its rounds around the internet is Snoke is Mace Windu. I have also heard that. So it's literally because he's bald. That's all it is. Well, here's no. Here's here's what they say. So they say that Mace Windu survived his fall after being blown out the window by the Emperor. The Force lightning turned his skin white. Just like it messed with Palpatine's skin, um, and that he uh, he he has some he's bald obviously, and that he survived and became angry with the Jedi Order and everything, and that's he became the supreme leader. And yeah. he's Darth Vader. Uh, I've heard that Snoke is actually Darth Vader, right? Uh, which is dumb. <laughs> my but my personal favorite of all is that Snoke. And hear me out here, because this is the one that I. Um, I don't believe, but if but if it turns out it's this, I also will be pissed, but at the same time we'll laugh a lot. That Snoke, if you look at the top of his head, he has a very distinct, on the right side of his head, near the top, he has this pretty big gash. Well, the theory is that Snoke is the stormtrooper who in episode four, while walking in, bumped his head <laughs> in that exact same spot. To those of you who don't know, in episode four, there's a pretty famous shot. It's small, but one of the uh, actors, one of the extras in a storm in stormtrooper garb accidentally bumped his head on the set. And it, like, it's, and it's it like made a blink- it into the final cut It's of like the a film. blink and you miss. Like, nobody, yeah, he like, just kind of bonks his head as he's walking. But he and, and like he, and he the, probably and, can barely see out of that. Right. And well and the and the camera keeps following Vader and the other stormtroopers. It doesn't like stick on him. But um the theory is that that stormtrooper actually got seriously <laughs> injured there. But developed the was force. Well, was force sensitive. Like he snapped out of it or something and went on to become the supreme leader. Like, <laughs> and that gash is from that moment when he And he was it. just like Officer Snoke. Like, I, like, I I don't know, but that J- one Jack Snoke. Okay, that that one I kinda like. <laughs> that one, like, out of all the theories, that one made me laugh. Can out you imagine that. that he's like, so you know, Kylo Ren's on a knee. He's like, Master, tell me, how did you become the supreme leader? He goes, Well, it started as I was following your grandfather. Uh, I, was one the, day. I was the right place at the right time. I bumped my head. <laughs> It was like you remember that movie, The Iron no, Giant. No, no, I don't know. You know, he'll be no. This is how he would tell it. He would say, "Well, I was standing and hanging a clock above the bathroom, and I saw it in my head. And when I rose up, I had a revelation of the Force. I had the Force capacitor, and, I, and the Force showed me the flux capacitor. <laughs> that's that's what's gonna happen. Do you pull Zemeckis, George Lucas, Spielberg all together? Boom, God. Oh man, that. <laughs> Is dumb. That is, <laughs> that that is, very, is stupid. That is very dumb. That should be a meme. All right. All right. All right. Uh, ne- more theories. Okay. Theory three that I heard. Boyega will either A, become force sensitive, or B, betray the resistance in this movie. Ooh, I don't know if he'd betray. 
I those are actually two separate. But he theories. is a coward. One theory is that he's gonna. One theory is that he's gonna become force sensitive, and that's basically based on uh, like solely pr- pretty much that he had the lightsaber. Well, he bumped his head, and he's a stormtrooper. <laughs> <Yes. Okay. laughs> that he uh, that he had the lightsaber. He tried to fight Kylo, and he kind of held his own for a little bit. So yeah. maybe he's force sensitive, and also maybe the force helped him snap out because it's like the force awoken him. Yeah. This one I can see maybe happening. I don't want it to, but I can see it. Yeah. Uh, him turning, I don't know about that, but he could be forced into turning. Yeah. Uh, pun. Uh, because, again, he is a coward. He well, he fully admit, admit, uh, admits to that. Like, I'm scared. I'm trying to run away here. And he... Um, now, he overcomes his cowardice because the power of boners is stronger. Right. Uh, but he is afraid. And I... So I could imagine, as I mentioned before already, I think betrayal will happen in this movie. I don't know if it'll be Finn who betrays them, particularly because he feels so strongly for Rey, but could he be manipulated by Kylo Ren or something? Perhaps. I'm not going to write this one as, as far-fetched. I'm going to write it as possible. Okay. Um, another one about, but the flip of that was there's another theory that Rey is going to become evil and Kylo Ren is going to ultimately become redeemed a character flip for episode 9. I don't want it. I do not want that. Don't to want that, and I doubt it. Uh, again, especially given that poster, the only bit of blue on it, the only bit of color, the only bit of life on it right. is Ray. And also, everything I, else is red. I think, it'd including be, Luke. I also think it would be really shitty if we had our first female main character. Like, I mean, like the protagonist. Yeah. The lead is based around Ray, and then she turns evil. I think that'd be shitty then. Yeah. No, I, I see her being seduced by the dark side in the same way that Luke was. Right. Especially because we get the shot of her in a cave. Right. And, again, links to the Empire. Um, and she got really angry at Kylo Ren and used a little Luke dark side action. So. Yeah. Which is interesting because it was also Obi-Wan getting super angry that allowed him to beat Darth Maul right. in Episode 1. Yeah. So there's an interesting parallel there. I um so here's the other one, uh, Kylo. But so the Ray becoming evil, I don't buy into. But Kylo Ren turning to the light side by the end of all this nonsense, not in this one, but by the end of seven, eight, nine, that I don't see as too too, too far fetched. It would mirror Anakin's path, so yeah, yeah, it would it would mirror it, and hopefully to a nicer end. Than... I honestly don't want it to. I want him to stay evil, and I want him to get killed by Ray. Yeah. I want that to happen. I probably won't, but... I mean, then there's the other bigger theory, which is that uh, Kylo Ren is a plant. Uh, oh. By which I mean, not a ficus, no. but, but he is an undercover agent of Luke Skywalker. But then he killed Han. No. Han committed suicide in order to keep his son's cover. Oh. That Han knew f- full and well... And, and that when he looked at me, he says, I know what I have to do, but I don't want to. Will you help me? He's literally asking him, like, I don't want to do this anymore. And Han's the one that presses the button. But Kylo, and that we'll see... Because the shot, you don't see the hand. Right, but Kylo, but then Kylo, Kylo let... He, he let all those villagers die? And, like, being a, a good guy, and he allowed them that to... That Kylo happen. is deep cover in order to uh, defeat the defeats no he let those five planets get blown up that's m- billions of people deep deep cover okay. I'll just, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't i don't buy the theory, theory yeah, i don't buy man. it i don't buy it uh but yeah there's there's a theory that like the whole thing that happened in the jedi with the, right. the other uh students killing all the students no is that it was all a false flag that those are the knights of ren oh. you know I mean? and that they're going to rise up and defeat snoke and defeat snoke and and uh destroy the the first order yeah i don't buy into it uh yeah it doesn't really fit no uh it's an interesting i think it was people just wanting to think, make that last like han's last moment to be that right. han was in control i just think it's too they want han to shoot first yeah i just think it's too jason born that's way too jason born to be you know star wars um there's some romantic theories also we can briefly touch on so one kylo ren and ray will fall in love and not going to be that way if they're if, cousins. And if you take... Well, that's... So that obviously, yeah, negates the cousin theory. Ooh, if or you, maybe they do. If you take it the Skywalker or Kenobi theory, it's like, oh, the union of them is finally balanced between the Skywalkers and the Kenobis because obviously the Force revolves around them. I also think that's stupid, and I hope it doesn't happen. 
I mean, I guess Star Wars does have a history of uh, incest. It's one of the nah, things that they're true. pretty well known for. That's true. Another theory is... Oh, what if they make out, and, and again, to Mirror and Empire, then, they yeah. make out, and then it turns out, Luke's like, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Don't make the same mistake I did. You're literally, like, cousins. <laughs> um, okay, the other one is uh, Finn and Rey, which we got a little the little flirtatiousness from Finn's side, um, and Rey was appreciative of him and told him at the end that she'll see him again. No, I think Finn's friend zone. I think Finn is friend zone too. I think if anyone, it would be, because I mean, well, all right, let's let's t- take a step back. If Ray is the Luke character and Finn is the Han character, I guess, because he oh, wanted he po, wanted to run. Poe Dameron's Poe Dameron. No, Poe Dameron is Lando. Oh He's yeah, He's smooth as shit. And but Lando, Lan- uh, maybe. I think because Finn, he wanted to run away. He wanted to look out for number one, but ultimately he came back to the rescue. Right. Finn is absolutely the Han Solo character. Right. So if Ray's Luke and Finn is Han Solo, then I guess that made Harrison Ford Leia or BB-8. No. Yeah. Um, no. So the other one is. So I also agree. I don't think. I personally think that Ray's not going to have any romantic connections. She doesn't need to. I hope she doesn't. I. The other one is that Poe Dameron and Finn first gay couple in Star Wars. Oh, you know what? They do have a big bromance going. I, this is one where I think they're going to be bros. They seem like bros to me more than um, well, and a uh, gay couple. And, and I mean, obviously sex is a spectrum, but we've already seen that Finn is uh, a traditionally heterosexual man. He is super in love in, with Rey. With Rey, yeah. So I think it would be a, a bit... But it might be interesting if, if it turns out that Poe is gay and maybe that's not reciprocated. Like, he does something... And it's like, like, the, like he has a look in his eye. You know what I mean? Like he knows. Oh, I, I can't have him because he's not like that. But it might just give more depth to the character. Uh, that like it would be an interesting parallel again. That Finn's doing all this stuff for Ray because he's in love with Ray, and Poe's doing the same thing for Finn because maybe he has feelings for Finn. I on see that I would, would be okay with. It'd yeah. be cool. And especially because Poe is such a badass. Oh, and to make it even weirder, what if Ray falls for Poe, but she can't have him because he's gay? And then Kylo <laughs> Ren cuts off his penis. Wait, his own penis uh, or Poe's penis? His penis. Oh. Just cuts it off like, ah, father! And he just cuts yeah. it off like, grandfather! In one of his rages? Yeah. Like, this was my grandfather's falling was his penis for Padme. <laughs> uh, he should... I, I'll get a robot penis like Granddad. Yes. yes. Um, did, did he get a robot penis? I pre- he was he like, was was he lying face down when he caught on fire, right? Yeah. And Mustafar. Oh, it burned his penis right off. Yeah. yeah. Burned off his Musta penis. It, his Musta bar. <laughs> <laughs> his Musta bar. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, so yeah. Uh, any other theories that you heard? Uh, just that uh, Kylo Ren is going to be in Darth Vader's castle on Mustafar in this movie. That'd be cool. Oh. And that that shot that we see of him where it's all the red, it's because. Like the background is actually lava. One. I also heard which we've seen Mustafar's ca- the castle of Mustafar now. So I'd yeah. like to see more of it. The only other one I heard was that Luke will die at the end of this movie. I mean, that's been speculated a lot. I hope not. I hope that because then presumably what Leia died died in the interim time. No, I think what's going to happen. I hope is... that they find a way of writing Leia out well, but not killing her. Oh no, no, no. I think I think they have to kill her up because. It... You can't just have her retire while there's still a war on. Uh, and it's going to... I mean, they can do one of two things. Either A, do what they did with Hunger Games and Philip Seymour Hoffman and just, like, make scenes with un, uh, unused footage of her for Episode Nine. Okay, that would work. Uh, and then some digital stuff like they did with Rogue One. Or the other thing they could do is just do a, a simple scene. You don't even need to have actual Carrie Fisher, obviously, because she's passed. But just, like, that shot where we see Leia from behind, have someone come up to her and, like, whisper in her ear or whatever, be like, uh, you know, ma'am, the, the, the ship's gonna explode or whatever, like, after a big battle. And she goes down with the ship. You know what I mean? She's not a princess anymore. She's General Leia Organa, damn it. She's gonna go down with the ship. And it's, uh, you know, the last movie ended with Han's death and that this one would end with, like, the the... Because, I mean, Empire ended on a sad note, and this one could end on a sad note as well, which is that she went down with the ship. Yeah, I would like the idea that if there was, like, if there was some kind of um, not used footage 
of her like just like or like that, that like the footage of her from behind and then just have like someone or just use a double and have someone come in and just be like 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 um general organa like it's happened or it's like, like we've like we've done it and just have it be like a, like like a, just a scene of her like winning a battle so you're like oh she was there helping out but you don't see her face or anything and that's just kind of it so you're like oh, okay leia was helping out for episode nine yeah. you mean yeah but because i feel like th- but i feel like that would be like oh they they had to do that little thing for carrie fisher but leia is such an integral part of the story that really? for her to not be part of it would feel wrong yeah, I guess. I mean, she's the inciting incident in. Dude, Kylo. Let's have Kylo uh, let's, episode. Let's have Kylo murder. Four. Let's have Kylo murder her. Murder his dad. Let's murder his mom. Oh no, that's bad taste. That'd be evil. That's bad taste. That would be evil. Especially because Carrie Fisher's mom also died a day after oh, Carrie yeah. Fisher. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing about that? Because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's fucked up. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much does it for the Star Wars theories that I heard. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's always new ones circulating, uh, but those are the, the the big ones. I'm gonna posit one theory just right now, really quick, and I'm not gonna talk about it. Just gonna pause it. You deal with it. Um, race parent Yoda. Oh, that she's a Yoda baby. She's Yoda's baby. Uh, like Yoda's granddaughter or Yoda's daughter. Yoda's daughter. Yes. So she is at least fifty percent whatever Yoda is. Yep. I no, dig no, no, it. I dig it. Okay. No. All right. Here's my and Yoda's, here's no, a side, Yoda's, a, Yoda's mother, Jar Jar. Oof. Yoda, Wait, you mean Ray's mother? Did I say Yoda's mother? <laughs> you said Yoda's mother. Ray's mother. I don't think that timeline works out. Yoda and Jar Jar made Ray. Okay. Side theory. Snoke, Yoda. Just with the ears cut off. And that's he why, lo- that's he why loses he, his ears. That's why, no, he tucks it back. That's yeah. why he uses the, halluc- the the hologram to make himself so yeah, huge. Yeah, to make him look so big. Size, or, you size know matter, what? Size matter, Yoda. Peter, for, Peter, Yoda's Peter. a force ghost, so he just possesses that stormtrooper that bumped his head oh. and turns him into Snoke. Dude, no. It makes so much sense. Full circle. Snoke, Qui-Gon. Oh, shit. <laughs> There it is. Qui Gon was the first Force ghost, and the that was last one of the things that a lot, a lot of people missed. And the last Jedi. A lot of people missed in the movie. So Qui Gon's first Force ghost. Qui Gon is the first Jedi to figure out how to be a Force ghost, and the last Jedi to become Snoke. Oh man! Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, Wait, obviously, no. there'd be just a bunch of Dude, little Jedi younglings running I, around I if got they could it. all Force ghosts. I got it. Snoke, Greedo. Oh shit, Greedo! Greedo got shot, he survived, he fought, joined the Empire, and built up the ranks, and became the Supreme Leader! Now, you know what, the face is too weird, but who it could be? That pig nose guy from the cantina. Oh, he... You know, pig nose and ball chin? Yeah. Wait, no. Uh, De- Dax, Daxter, Dexter, Dex? From... That guy with the laboratory? No, no, no. Sabulba! No, no, the guy from episode two who tells him about Camino Inns. Oh, and that's no, a, but that's he's got dart. four arms. Yeah, well, no, he tucks two back. Oh, okay. He left the diner on Coruscant and became Snoke. But what if it was a Sabulba? It could be a Doug. <laughs> they're Dugs. Oh, that's right, they're called no, Doug. Oh, it's Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, <laughs> that two-headed guy. Yeah, the two-headed guy, <laughs> or or no, it's um, it's the Gungan leader, uh, Boss Nass. He's me so no like Don Abu. So, and he's like, I'm pretty sure he just blew out our audio. And so I don't like Don Abu. I become a supreme leader of the First Order. <laughs> <laughs> you made him sound like a Hawaiian. Oh, okay. So, brother. So, so, if you can't tell, we are very excited for Star Wars Episode Eight. I'm counting the days till December fifteenth. Um, I don't think we have much more to add. Other and then than we don't have to wait much longer for Han Solo, Han Solo the which movie. Is, will be May of next year, I believe. It's a year from now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because they're not wait, or maybe it's summer. They're not waiting the full year again. Yeah. Which I'm excited for. I really hope that this kid Alden Ironike. I hope it's can, good. Can can be good. So, um, really quick to finish off the episode for the evening, speed round other Star Wars celebration news that was great. Okay. Uh, Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 looks, looks awesome. Super awesome. And continuing and the story, the story is yeah. of a is also from a stormtrooper's perspective, right. a stormtrooper like special forces. It's also a lady. Uh, and I'm very excited to play it. Right. Uh, and it looks beautiful. It's uh, it looks gorgeous. Absolutely. Um uh, they did an awesome little uh, tribute to Carrie Fisher, and uh, her daughter actually came up and did the whole 
help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope, your father, you're, you fought with my father in the Clone Wars. She did the whole speech as like a little tribute, and then the curtain pulled up, and John Williams was there with the whole crew, and they did Leia's theme, and it was just a beautiful tribute. Right. Um, we got S- S- Rebels, season four will be the end, and that's yep. coming up. Or no, season four. Five. Season four. They're, they're season start, four will be. This will be season four. Right, that's okay. the end of Rebels. That a new Star Wars show will be coming. Hopefully, post Return of the Jedi. We don't know what. I'm really hoping. We don't know anything it's about aftermath. it. But we know there will be. That would be cool. Uh, we got to see both Harrison Ford and George Lucas, two people that hate Star Wars, to show up at uh, at the event. Presumably because Carrie Fisher passed away, or else they wouldn't really give a shit. Right. Um, everyone was there actually. Uh, the the whole gambit of yeah. folks, and of course, um, other except than... for, I want to say the guy that was in the Darth Vader costume because oh. he still hates what they did to him. Hmm. Because the when they pulled the mask off, that wasn't that actor. Right. That was a different. That was the. Uh, I want to say his name is Peter something. Uh, the guy who walked around in the Vader suit in episodes one, two, and or at uh, four, five, and six. Right wasn't the guy that we actually saw no, when the mask came guy, yeah. off. Uh, because he looked silly. It wasn't, the guy funny we, voice. And it wasn't the guy we heard either. Yeah. So nobody knows who that guy is, even though he is Darth Vader. Right. Like well, no, the, James Earl Jones is really James Earl Vader. Jones is the voice of Darth Vader, but that guy was Darth Vader. Yeah, but for for most people, James Earl Jones is really Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, but yeah, or Hayden Christensen, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, other stuff that was mentioned was just, you know, toys, merchandise. Uh, oh, for sure. Showing off cosplay. Stuff that, whatever, look it up, you can you can see the pics. Um, overall, though, biggest thing, obviously, was Last Jedi. And yeah, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'll beat a dead horse. With, I'll cut open a, a Tauntaun. Because yeah, beat I'm, a dead Tauntaun. I'll beat a dead Tauntaun with my lightsaber, because they smell bad on the outside. Nah. <laughs> I think that's going to about do it for the Strong and the Geek, though. Yeah. Well, you know what? You can always check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Strong and Geek. You check me out personally at the Ben Ramirez and him at ramres 4 prez uh, when we feel the fancy of updating those things. You could check this episode out if you're listening on iTunes. Hey, why don't you pop on over to SoundCloud, give us a like, and a subscribe there, too. Or maybe uh, you could also dash on over to YouTube, where we got a channel, and you can like and subscribe us there. That way, A, you'll have three different uh, notifications when you, our episodes come out, and B, you'll be helping out the show a whole bunch. Also, comments. We would love to know what you think about these theories, and uh, if you have any theories you're of your own. And we'd also love suggestions for future episodes. Uh, and I and think, also, and, oh. and if you're a fan of the show, feel free to also go to the grassroots style and spread by word of mouth. Tell people, hey, check out The Strong and the Geek. Oh, absolutely. And make sure, you, uh, if you'd really like to send in something a bit longer than twe- uh, tweeting, you can also get it to us at uh, thestrongandthegeek at gmail.com. So I think that's going to about do it. You all stay strong. And may the force be geek with you. <laughs>